Hello and welcome to our next video. In this lesson, we're just gonna take the time to review working with strings. So again, you're probably gonna to wanna to go out and look at the API for Java strings, and that's pretty easy to do. You can just bring up any browser that you prefer and go to Java string and find the API. And if you wanna go from platform seven to whatever platform, we just put in the number we want there. But basically you can see the different methods and some examples of working with strings right here. Constructors, you can pass in byte arrays, you can pass in different strings to start strings, etc. And essentially make your strings uh, however you need to to get them going. But what's more important is that there are a number of methods defined on string for us to use. And note these are not static. So we do need an instance of string in order to make these work. You can't just say string.charat and expect it to work. And so uh, you can read through these on your own time. Again, way too much to go through here. And we're going to actually look at a lot of this code together um, as we continue to examine some of the more important parts of the string class that we'll be leveraging throughout our course. And ultimately, as we uh, want to grow as programmers. So let me just clear this out really quick so that we have a clean slate. And let's just take a look at the code that we have ready to go for working with strings. So we have a bunch of number of things we're going to do, but basically we have this quote called we've done the impossible and it makes us mighty and quote part impossible, which doesn't match on case. So again, we're going to take a moment to remember that strings are case sensitive and that finding things to match may require modifying the string in some way in order to determine that that part of the string exists. So we'll print out the quote, we'll print out the quote dot length to see the length method on string, and then we're just gonna print some stars every once in a while to randomly separate some things to make things easier to read as we go. Some of the main methods that we need to be in command of that will be most important for us are gonna be things like contains, char at, index of, and last index of, substring, and then uh, I'm going to show a couple things at the end for string builder, string buffer, using split and tokenizer to work with strings in another way as well. But what we can see here is contains allows us to determine does the quote contain impossible. And what we can see here, I'm going to make this a little bigger, is that we have impossible, of course, is this quote part. So does quote contain quote parts? Does quote contain quote part dot two uppercase? Does quote contain quote part dot two lowercase? And it depends on how we determine, you know, what's going on and which one we're raising, which one we're lowering, and of course, if they're case sensitive. And then we can determine the character at a specific position in the string. So essentially, you can think of a string as an array of characters. And so the string is kind of a wrapper on top of that. And so every character in the string has an ordinal position, 0 through n. And that allows us to determine specific characters at spots. And remember that arrays are zero-based, so this works the same way. So if I want to say, give me the char at zero, that's going to be the very first character in the string. The char at 17 will be the 18th character in the string, etc. And we can get the last character, quote, dot length minus one. So again, one of the most important errors to avoid in computer science is an off by one error. And that is because of index-based systems like this, where we could potentially go one too many or one too few. And so we want to make sure that we keep that in mind when we get length. We need to get length minus one to get the last character since we're zero-based. And so index of and last index of allow us to determine specific places of an, a character in the string. And so Index of is going to start from the left and move to the right, so it'll be the first index as you read from left to right. Last index of would start from the right and move to the left and be the last time it was encountered in that string. And then uh, we can get an entire position of a string by doing you know, an index of as well. It doesn't have to be just a character. You can pass an entire string in and make sure that string is matched. So you know, the quick brown fox or whatever, if you were looking for fox, you could pass that in. Here we're looking for impossible in our quote, we've done the impossible. And that gives us the index of where that exists. And finally, substring gives us the ability to get parts of a string 
for a specific length. For example, 0 through 18 gives us the first 18 characters. Uh, we can get a substring that starts at 18 and goes to the end, or basically character 19 to the end. And then we have you know, an ability to do some moving around of things with those indexes that we have and determine you know, the, the first M is here, the last T is there, the last T minus first M is going to be between M and T. And so that's what's going to happen there. And you can see all this stuff printed out. And working with strings is not, and hopefully this will say impossible, uh, and working with strings is not impossible, right? So just different ways to print that out. Again, just to remember there's print line and print F, and we can do variable replacements. And so just another example to play around with and learn that. And then just, you know, finding the equality again, we've seen earlier, but equals and equals ignore case are very important to remember when we're looking for equality. If we don't care about case sensitivity, we should do equals ignore case. If it must match on case, we should just do the equals method. So let me just run this and we'll come back to the string builder and string buffer and the splitting and stuff. Uh, those are a little more advanced and probably you haven't seen that at this point. And that's okay. So as we run this, what we've seen is that we have our different abilities. We've done the impossible that makes us mighty. The length is 52. Impossible is not in there. Impossible is not in there. But if we lower it, impossible is in there. The first character is W. 18 character is P. Last character is an exclamation point. So you can see all the different positions, links, etc. Substrings, we've done the impossible. Uh, you know, we've done the imp. Possible, that makes us mighty. Possible on the, you know. Working with strings is not impossible. Working with strings is not impossible. Um, case sensitive, they don't match. Ignoring the case, they do match. And then let's go back to the code here for these last pieces. So we can compose strings using string builders and string buffers. And as far as I'm aware, the only reason we'd ever want to use a string buffer is if we're doing multi-threaded programming. So we should probably just use a string builder until we're actually doing multi-threaded programming. So uh, just to save resources or whatever, String Builder would give us that ability. In the String Builder, then we just append whatever string we want to continue to create this string and to get it printed out. We would say system.out.printsb.toString. I just want to show you that the uh, toString method, of course, is inherent. Uh, so we could just say system.out.printlinesb, and that would give us the same result there. And the same thing would happen down below for our string buffer. Uh, they're essentially the same type of object. They do the same thing. And again, I think the only difference that I'm aware of is the multi-threading, which you would use a string buffer for. Finally, there are two other topics, and these are going to become important as we grow as a programmer and throughout the course. Uh, and these are splitting and tokenizers. They do the same thing, but it's just two different ways to get to the same result. Ultimately, we can take a string and we can perform a split operation, which puts it into an array. So hopefully you know what an array is. Uh, we're going to cover a review on it shortly, but uh, essentially an array is just an index-based place uh, where we're storing tokens, and that's what we're doing here. So uh, this is my program. Each one will get their own slot in the array, and we'll just print them out by splitting on that. And you can see that way you could work with specific parts of a string, parsing it out, splitting it on that space. The tokenizer is going to do the exact same thing. We're going to get test string. We're going to tokenize it on a space here, and we're basically going to say while the tokenizer itself has more elements, just print out the next element. And so those are ultimately doing the same thing. And you can see this is my program prints out, as does this is my program. And I want to run it one last time because we put in a couple statements here just to make sure that we can see that that does, in fact, SB um, and SB2 do print out equally whether or not we have two string or not. But that wraps up our review of working with strings and the string tokenizer and string buffer and string builder and splitting. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.